what we want to do now is add what we call a slider. A switch is either on or off. So it's one, it's either on or off. It's only two values. You can't get very much, you can't get very, you can't any different colors by doing it's either zero or one. Let's set this up by, if I, if I click and drag, I can select multiple objects and then I can move them over. So I'm going to move them over here to the edge and notice how it, it automatically clicks to the margin for me. So let's go ahead and set that up. Um, we've got these, we could spread these out a little bit more. Um, if I select that and I use the arrow keys, notice how it'll move incrementally. I can move that down three or four times. I can move that up four or five, six times. Maybe we try to, I, anyway, that's just, we're just kind of simply moving it around. Let's go back to our object library and delete this filter. And we want slider. So let's click and drag. And notice again, it has the automatic guides. I want to center that and have it, notice how it fits really nice. Now I can go ahead and press Control D to, delete, to duplicate, sorry, Command D. <laughs> Command D to duplicate. And let's duplicate that one more time. Awesome. We need to attach these to our code. So let's control, click and drag. And we need to call this red slider and click connect. Guess what this one's gonna be called? Whoops, I right click. Now, notice how um, th this is another way that you can, so here I was controlling and clicking but if I right click on the slider, notice how it says referencing outlet. If I, if I, sorry, let me click away and then right here, see reference outlet. This is another way. So right click, I've selected it. I'm gonna right click. Now notice how I've got this little arrow. Hey, guess what? I can do that. So what do we say? Red green slider then I can just press return and it'll automatically fill that in the trouble with this method is you have to click away to get rid of that if you control click like I'm doing here then it, it disappears when you're done all right and finally blue slider and then I just press return and it creates it awesome now notice if I select this slider and I come over to my inspector and I check out the attributes. Notice how we have value, minimum, maximum. Right now the value is set at 0.5, which is halfway here. If I want to, I can go ahead and change that value to a different starting value. And if I, if I set that to zero, for example, and then I click away, Notice how it updates there. And so I can change the starting value like we've done with the on off for the, the switch. On the slider, you have, you could set what we call a, a starting value or a default value. Let's go ahead and change these. I can change this to zero or to one. The book says change it to one. So let's go ahead and change that to one. And I can do the same for this one. I'm just selecting and changing the value. All right, now we want to call an action every time this slider changes. Any of these sliders, we're gonna call an action. So I'm gonna click, press Control, click and drag, and I'm gonna put that down here underneath this method. Now remember, we want this to be an action, and we're going to be calling this slider changed, and the type will be UI slider. All right, go ahead and click connect. And I'm gonna give myself a couple of space, a couple of lines, so it's easy to read. Now let's connect these other sliders. Control, click. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> I don't need to do that. I want to undo it and click away. I don't want to click 
to control drag because when you control drag, what you're doing is creating a new action. I want to connect this action to here. So instead, I want to click and drag from the action to that slider and to that slider. That's the easiest way to do it. When we make a change here, I want to update the values based on the settings within the slider. Now, the first thing I need to do is move this code from the switch change, and I'm going to create a new method. So I'm going to press Command X. Now everything disappeared, don't worry. I'm going to create a new function, and I'm just going to call this function change, or let's see, update color. And now I press Command V to paste the code. The reason I'm doing this is notice here now in my switch changed, I can just say update color and call that method. But at the same time, I want to call the same method by saying update color. So what's happening is we are consolidating the logic so that it's in one location so I don't have to duplicate it. Because what I want is every time I click a switch or move a slider, the color updates. Well, the color updates based on the values set for each one of these. Well, if I'm calling the same method or I'm doing the same action from multiple locations, I want a its own method that I can call. So now I can say update color when a slider changes or when a switch changes. Now. In order for this to respond to the value of the slider, what we'll do is update the code here. And instead of saying one, we're going to say CG float. And I'm going to say red slider dot value. And that returns. And this, notice when I return. I press um, option and I click on it. This is a float. Well, it needs to be a type CG float. And so when you put it in the parentheses, what it does is it's casting it from a float to a CG float because that's what is required in the UI color method. So let's do the same thing here, only we're going to say CG float green slider. And guess what? CG float blue slider. Oh, sorry. Dot value. Because the dot value is, is what is the float. Very good. All right, let's check that out, see how it goes. Okay, so now if I turn this on and I say, all right, we have red and it's all the way over now, check this out. Dun, 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 dun. Cool. Guess what? Turn this on. Hey, hey, check it out. All of a sudden I have every color in the world. I can do millions and millions of colors. Cool. All right, now to wrap this up, we want to have a reset button because it's kind of a hassle to have to click through and drag and do all the sorts of things. So let's go back. Let's let's uh, close this. Let's add the reset button. So if you come over to the object library, clear that out and just say button. You click and drag and again we're going to set this over here. Now you can change the text a couple of ways. You can double click into it and notice how it selects it and I can say reset, press return. Or I can select the button and I can come over here and notice how it says text here. Now it's currently, the text doesn't fit. You can do a couple things. Um, to do that you can have the text change size or you can resize this. So I want to resize this just slightly. We won't worry about it too much. All right, very good. Now, when you click the button, it's going to do what? We want it to have a call an action. 
So let's go ahead and press Control and click. Whoops. Now, Control click is the same as if you press right click, but I want to click and drag. So hold down the Control, click and drag, and then come on down. And we're going to say Reset. And we're going to change this to an action. And you can change this to button, although we won't use that. But we just want to say reset. All right, well, what are we going to reset? The things we want to reset are we want to turn the switches off and set the sliders to a default value. Start by setting the switches, red switch dot is on equals false green switch dot is on whoops is on equals false uh oh <laughs> getting ahead of myself I uh, auto completed and didn't see it green switch there we go is on false blue switch dot is on equals false. Next, we're going to set the sliders. So we're going to say red slider. There we go. Dot value and set that to one. And then green slider dot value equals one. And blue slider dot value equals one. Okay. So let's test that out. All right, let's change some colors. Let's turn this on and then reset. Okay, it didn't reset the color. We missed one little item. At the end of the reset, we need to call update color. There we go. That way, when we reset, we update the color based on the values that have changed. Let's run that one more time. And we'll change some colors. Perfect. All right. So let's do a few more things to clean up the UI a little bit. If you select the switch, you can actually change the color within um, here. It's called the on tint. And then you also have what they call the thumb tint. The thumb is this little circle. The on tint currently says green. Well, if I come over here, I can actually change that and I can click that and I can come over here and make that a red or I can choose a color swatch. I can just say red. And then if I click away, for some reason, this color picker wants to stay open. Let's fine, we'll leave it open. Click the other switch. Uh, this is what our green. So go to switch and we say on tint color, meaning when it's on, we want it to be green. Finally, when we want this on, we want it to be blue. All right, select that and check blue. Come on. Blue. <laughs> anyway, there you go, blue. All right. The other thing we can do is we can change the slider. The slider has a few colors. If you select one of the sliders, then you have what we call min track, max track, and thumb tint. And uh, the min track is on the left. The max track is on the right. And then the thumb is the circle. So we want to change this min track. So go ahead and select, and we're going to choose the same colors. So we're going to say red. And then we're going to say min track is blue, which it is by already. And then finally, green. And notice how it checks out. All right, the other thing we want to do is change so that this color view has something to look at. We need to have a little more of a border. I'm going to close the colors. Up here we have a method called view did load. View did load gets called every time 
the objects on the screen are about to show up. And so this is something you want to do in order to set up when it's being prepared. And what we're doing here is we're going to say, I want the color view to have a border. So we're going to say border, sorry, we say color view dot layer because we're referencing the visual layer dot border width equals five color view dot layer dot corner radius equals 20 and then the border color we're going to say color view dot layer dot border color equals and we're going to say it's UI color dot black and then in this case it expects a CG color so we're going to say CG color all right very good now let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks Cool, see how now I have a nice little border. We can change this up. Check it out. Okay, now notice how when this is disabled, the slider is still there. Let's fix that. We don't want that. So let's add a method called update controls, and I can add that down here below my reset button. And we're gonna say function update controls and we want to set it to say the red slider dot is enabled this is another property on these controls that allow you to disable or enable something meaning whether you can interact with it so if we want to disable the slider we can say red slider dot is enabled equals red switch dot is on so if it's on that means the slider is enabled if it's off it's not enabled pretty cool blue switch dot is, sorry <laughs> i'm gonna get myself mixed up here blue slider dot is enabled equals blue switch dot is on very good and then green slider dot is enabled equals green switch dot is on all right now we're going to call this every time we use the reset function we're going to say update controls and every time when the view loads we're going to say update controls. Alright, let's check it out and see how we did. Alright, let's change some colors. And click reset. Now notice I can't select because the switch is turned off. Now it's on. Now I can select it. Perfect. Now when you click reset it goes to black. And actually when I looked at the book I realized that if I go back here and I look at my starting color, the color doesn't get set until after when I say color view dot background color equals color. When it gets when these are all off, then the values are set to zero, and so this gets set back to black. All right. Hopefully that helped. If you had any questions, you can certainly open the source code for the color mix that's provided. You can compare, see the differences. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and look for more videos.